guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetra Big Gaming, the series where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in gaming. Now, although I've played some Garden Warfare in the past, the original Plants vs. Zombies game is one I only got around to playing recently, and honestly, as a big fan of tower defense games, I can definitely see why this game got as popular as it did after it released over 13 years ago as I make this video. There are a whole bunch of versions of Plants vs. Zombies, but in this video I'll be focusing strictly on the PC version of the game. And speaking of plants, some of them are really healthy to eat, and if you're like me, you should probably be eating more of them. That's why I'm super happy to once again be sponsored by HelloFresh for this video. HelloFresh makes mealtime super simple, as they can get all the fresh ingredients right to your doorstep to make some delicious meals. You can choose from a wide variety of recipes with anything from burgers to rice bowls to calorie smart options and basically everything in between. On their site, you can also manage how many meals you want per week or if you want to pause or cancel your subscription at any time. Over the past few weeks, I've honestly had a ton of fun making these meals and as a novice, I think I did pretty okay. So if you're interested in prepping and eating some fresh meals, help support the channel and check out the HelloFresh link in the description, and use code TetraBitGaming at checkout to get up to 20 free meals and free shipping on your first box. And with all that said, smack the like button below to plant some plants, let's crack some zombies and find some lost bits. Alright, so before we get to talking about the final launch release of the game, let's first take things way back and go over numerous changes to the game from its earlier pre-release builds. Now, probably the biggest change of them all is with the title of the game itself. Now, I won't go over the entire development history of this game, but since the initial start of the game's development in 2002, there were a whole bunch of names that were tossed around before finally going with Plants vs. Zombies. These include Bloom and Doom, Zombotany, Lawn of the Dead, which I assume may have tiptoed a bit too close to the Dawn variety, and many, many more, as are seen on this slide. From some pretty good ones like Rest in Peas, to some questionable ones too. Also, being frustrated that he couldn't use the Lawn of the Dead name, developer George Fan made graphics for three more titles, Zombies and Grass, Insane Iscarium, which was a play on another game developed by George Fan, Insane Aquarium, as well as Get Your Fill of Chlorophyll. Anyways, after juggling with a few of the names, ultimately around 2009, it seems the Plants vs. Zombies name was finally decided on. Interestingly enough though, some of the names like Zombotany and Bloom and Doom still did make their way into the final game, albeit in a smaller role. And in addition to sharing the early title graphics, George Fan also shared a whole bunch of early graphics for the game, including this early design of the pea shooter where it actually was shaped like a pea pod. For the most part, these other early designs look pretty similar to their final counterparts, with notable exceptions to this being the Hypno Shroom looking less funky, and the cactus was initially not a cactus at all, but rather what looks like a bee stinger instead. And he also showed off a bunch of early graphics for the zombie side of things too. Not only did the base zombie graphic get redone, but originally, for simplicity, the zombies just had a medieval helmet in silver, gold, and black to signify different levels of defense, a shield instead of the door, as well as a propeller cap thing instead of the balloon that's used for the balloon zombie in the final. I guess the zombies still did keep a propeller cap, albeit smaller in the final design, as a nod to this original one. Then, in addition to all of this, there are numerous screenshots of the game throughout its development. Firstly, there's this earliest known screenshot of the game where it looks very different with a bunch of placeholder graphics, as well as what looks to be a real-life picture of, I suppose, some soil as the background. The zombies look way more ghoulish, and it looks like in this earlier build, the player would have had to water the plants instead of collecting sunshine, as you do in the final. Then, in later screenshots, we can see the game progress more and more to the final product, but along the way, there are still a bunch of things to note, like this placeholder maple leaf background here, an early placeholder version of the magnet room seen here, different UI graphics and placement, like having the sunshine counter in the top right here, and more. 
Now, the last thing from the pre-release build I want to touch on, at least for this video, are several plants as well as zombies that were planned to be included but were ultimately removed from the game before the final release. In addition to the propeller zombie that became the balloon zombie I mentioned earlier, there's also this early version of the balloon zombie where it's seen firmly grasping onto the balloon instead of having it tied around its stomach. Then next up we have a dog walker zombie. Apparently, although the zombie itself still had the same 10 hit point amount of health as a regular zombie, after being defeated, the dog will then charge alone. This dog would have had 14 HP and apparently, due to its low to the ground nature, wouldn't be able to be hit by most of the plants in the game. I guess this mechanic is kind of similar to the newspaper zombie that charges at you faster after its newspaper gets destroyed. Then on the plant side of things, first is this Time Stopper Apple. Similar to the Ice Room, this would stop time for up to 3 seconds, but would also speed up the cooldown on any seed packets. Then as we saw earlier, there's also the Stinger Plant that could have apparently been placed on top of other plants and would then fire spikes at flying zombies. There's also an unused Iceberg Lettuce, which although was later added in Plants vs Zombies 2, was originally going to function here very differently. Here it was just going to function very similar to the regular Cabbage Pult, but just like the Snow Pea would slow down any zombie hits. I guess this effect might have been replaced by the Kernel Pult where its Butter Projectile has a 25% chance of stunning a zombie. Then lastly we got Cherry Hover Bomb, which uses early Cherry Bomb graphics and would function pretty much the same but could be placed on top of another plant. And then there's the Duplicator Cycler Plant that when planted would have a seed packet on top of it that, as the name implies, would constantly cycle. So I guess this would result in a random plant being cycled in constantly, for better or for worse. Now there are a whole bunch more pre-release changes, early graphics, concept art, early footage, and even a few working beta builds that have been dumped online. Unfortunately, it's too much to cover in a single video here, but if enough of you enjoyed this video, let me know and maybe someday I'll make a follow-up and we can take a deeper dive into more of the pre-release stuff. So, on that note, let's now switch gears and start talking about the final release of the game and the many things that are left over unused or that were scrapped. Now first up, although there are only 5 levels or worlds in the game, there is actually coding for an unused 6th level. There's only remnants of 6-1 left over, and unfortunately it just appears to be a duplicate of 5-9. Now despite this, the once planned 6th level was apparently intended to be a roof themed level at night. This theme is seen in the game's final level 5-10, so I guess the next world was going to build onto this theme even more. There's also reason to believe that the background used for 5-10 was once just going to be for level 6, as the file name for the background graphic is quite explicitly titled Background 6 Boss, while the rest of the level 5 stages use the background graphic titled Background 5. Now last up for this video, there are a ton of things in this game in the unused graphics department, and first are a few animations that are never seen. First up for the Magnet Shroom, there's its idle animation that's seen when it's active, but for when the shroom is inactive instead, which is never normally seen. Then also, once again for the Magnet Shroom, there's an unused extended animation for when it activates to steal a metallic object from a zombie. The final version kinda just snaps between states, whereas the unused one has a much smoother transition that I think looks much better. Then similarly, next, there's also an unused extended animation for the Grave Buster chomping away at a gravestone. It's pretty similar, but it appears to have an extra short little bounce halfway through the animation. Then there's this set of unused animations for the Squash, transitioning between the looking and idle pose, as well as this unused animation of the Sun Shroom sleeping while big. In the final game, the Sun Shroom sleeps in the daytime and won't ever grow to the bigger size, and as such, this never ends up being seen. And then to wrap things up for the unused animations for transitioning between poses, there are these unused ones for the dancing zombie transitioning from their pointing pose. Wow, that sure looks like a certain 80s pop star, you might be thinking, and yeah, before the Game of the Year update of the game was released in 2010, the main dancing zombie and the backup dancers looked quite different than they do now. 
Both of these were an obvious reference to the music video of Michael Jackson's Thriller. And in addition to the estate of Michael Jackson apparently objecting to this overt reference in the game, Michael Jackson actually passed away around a month after Plants vs. Zombies originally released. So yeah, I can definitely see how this was not a good time to have this reference in the game anyway. So ultimately, the Thriller costumes were changed to more generic 70s attire, and now the dancing zombies look nothing like Michael Jackson. But the copyright troubles for this game didn't end there either, as the description for the Zomboni Zombie was updated in the Game of the Year update as well. I guess someone thought that Zomboni was a bit too close to the trademarked name Zamboni, so after ultimately getting permission I guess, the developers changed the description of the Zomboni to be very tongue in cheek as it was changed to the following. Not to be mistaken for a Zamboni brand ice resurfacing machine. Zamboni and the image of the ice resurfacing machine are registered trademarks of Frank J. Zamboni Incorporated, and Zomboni is used with permission. For all your non-zombie related ice resurfacing needs, visit www.zamboni.com. Honestly, probably the best video game character description I've seen in a long time. And while we're talking about changes between versions, the graphic for the adventure option on the main menu Tombstone was changed too, to flip the level counter on the bottom to the top to I guess better match the top curve as is seen on the Tombstone, and I guess it removed the little gap between this option and the ones below. Now switching away from the unused animations, there's a whack load of more unused static graphics. The first of these are for two unused zombie seed packets for the iZombie minigame where the game gets flipped as you take control of spawning zombies instead of plants. Now these unused graphics are for seed packets of the Zomboni as well as the Pogo Zombie, both of which are normally never placeable in this mode. You can apparently still force the game to re-implement them in this mode, and although they are mostly functional, they still have a few issues, so that might be why they weren't fully added. Then speaking of the Zamboni again, there's also this early graphic for it where the Z is missing from the Zamboni. Also related to the zombies, we have this unused graphic of a zombie head in a helmet that was apparently meant for the zombie bobsled team. Sprites of a helmet as well as it getting damaged thought to have been meant for the Giga Gargantuars. There's also this unused belt and sprite associated with eye twitching meant for the Jack in the Box zombie. There's an early version of the Zombot's leg, an unused variant of the RV that's thrown at your plants by the Zomboss, and finally there's this early version of the Zombie Brain Flag where the damage holes are different, and there's this unused graphic of the Bungie Zombie where it looks like a deer in headlights. Now next up, I went over the Adventure Mode graphic that was changed on the main menu, but there are also a few other unused graphics for the Tombstone that are left over in the game. These were all seen in the pre-release build I mentioned earlier, but there's an early graphic of the survival button that was originally going to be placed at the top of the tombstone, a graphic for the vase breaker option that I guess was originally going to be on the main menu before being moved to the puzzle menu, and finally before being renamed to minigames, there's this unused graphic for challenges. And while on the topic of vase breaker, there's also an unused graphic for an also unused vase type, a zombie vase. In the final game, zombies only have a chance of being in the mystery vases, but perhaps this would guarantee them? Next up, there are also a few normally unseen screens left over in the game, the first of which is this shot of Crazy Dave's Twitty Dinkies where the player has a whole ton of cash but all the upgrade plants are sold out. Secondly, there's also this screen of the More Ways to Play menu that's seen in other versions of the game. Since the PC version already has most of these options on the main menu and it doesn't have a quick play mode, yeah, there wasn't really a reason to have this screen there, so it's kinda strange that this graphic for it was left over here. I mentioned a bunch of the unused graphics for the zombies earlier, but there are also several for the plants too. We got a slightly alternate version of the pumpkin that also contains a second intermediate stage of degradation that isn't ever seen in the game, and speaking of degradation, there's also this unused sprite for the spikeweed degrading too. In the final game, the spikeweed never degrades and basically only goes away if a zomboni drives onto it, but I guess this shows that it too was going to degrade maybe after dealing X amount of damage to zombies, or perhaps just over time. 
Then we got some very small sprites that I'll enlarge here for a face vine meant for the Grave Buster's face, eyelid sprites for the coffee beans, as well as this sprite meant to be eyebrows for the starfruits. And I guess this game really has something against eyebrows, as there's yet another unused eyebrow graphic, this time meant to have been for the imitator. Then we also have an unused alternate design of the Gatling P with a different hat and mouth barrels, an unused exhaust pipe section meant for the Cobb Cannon, and finally, although seen integrated into the final sprite of the Sea Shrooms, there's an unused standalone graphic for their eyes. And nope, the unused graphics don't stop there, we got quite a few more to go. Next, there's this unused Plants vs Zombies game box listed as PVZ. Now this is a leftover from the free trial version of the game, as there it's seen in Crazy Dave's store as a way to link the player to a site to purchase the full game. But yeah, in the full game, you already have the full game, so this wasn't necessary. There's an unused early version of the silver coin where it features a brain on it instead of the dollar sign. There's this unused icon for the also unused minigame, Bungie Blitz. And then we also have this early graphic of the daytime lawn as a few changes are seen from the final version. Now I mentioned some of the early pre-release graphics for the plants and such earlier, but it turns out a bunch of early crude placeholder graphics were left over in the final release too. We got crude placeholders for everything, including the wall and tall nuts, a pea shooter's head, lily pad, a very grumpy squash, <coughs> cabbage pulse cabbage, early graphics for the puff, fume, and doom shrooms, and finally an early placeholder for the cactus where it's seen looking hella cool and with some hair instead of the hat that they do have in the final. And lastly for the unused graphics, there's also a handful of them from the multiplayer mode that was seen on the console version of Plants vs Zombies. Since these are left over in the PC Game of the Year version, it's possible that the multiplayer mode may have at least been considered for the PC version as well. And now next, although not unused, there are some graphics that aren't ever seen in full and as such have sections not normally ever seen by the player. These include the full graphic of the umbrella leaf not being covered by leaves, we can see the cattails and gatling peas heads without their respective hats, there's some hair actually hidden away under the zomboni driver's hat, the imitator can also be seen what it looks like without a hat, there's a normally unseen section of Crazy Dave's leg graphic where you can get a glimpse at his belly, the body segment of the Gargantuars appears to show that their head might have been planned to fall off, much like they do with the other zombies in the game, but ultimately the head stays in place in the final version. And lastly, seeing how massive the Zombot is in the final boss fight in the game, it should be no surprise that there are parts of these graphics that are normally hidden off screen too. And I think we'll leave it there for this video. There's still a whole bunch of unused content to go over, including unused minigames, as well as all the other pre-release changes I mentioned earlier. So if there's enough interest, I'll definitely work on making a part 2 sometime in the future. And yeah, let me know if you'd be interested in seeing more Plants vs Zombies games on the channel, like Garden Warfare down the line too. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of my other Lost Bits, and be sure to subscribe to find your way back here in the future. And as always, thank you all so much for stopping by today, and I will see you in a bit.